What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Kick and Make Up Show. I'm the American Hybrid, Nick Cunningham. With me, as always, Jeremy J.D. Dorsey. And we are live here at Analog Arcade Bar, 302 Brady Street, Davenport, Iowa. Our home. We're, we're back, like, consistently yes. back. Yes, yes. You're getting better. Status yes. report, please, sir. Status report is... Uh, I have a ETA of January to be perfect, back to 100% perfect. normal, so Damn I am it. ready to, January, to, to get right. back going. January yeah. of 2017. 2018. 2019. Okay, yeah, 2020. Maybe, maybe 2020. No, just kidding, man. Maybe. January coming up. Good, yes, man. So yes. we're here, Analog Arcade Bar. Love it that we're back. They're awesome here. They've got new games right behind us. I don't know if you guys can see, probably not. Okay. Turtles in Time, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I know. Oh my God, I love I it. I used to play that game so much. If you guys, so yes, if you guys have not been down here and you're in the Quad Cities, turn this off. Come down here, 302 Brady Street, Danport, Iowa. They literally have every game ever made, right? Every single Just arcade about. game. I mean, they, they like, even have, like, the Nintendo 64 set up in the back, so like, you can go play some old school WrestleMania back yeah. there, man. They like, have every game, and you can drink here, and they have every beer on tap. Yep. Most every almost some tons a, a, a lot a lot of a lot. What if that was their thing? Like analog or K bar, home of a most lot. games and some beers. <laughs> a lot of everything. A lot of everything. Home of a lot of everything, <laughs> including fun. Yeah, yeah, we love them down here. We're happy to be here. Um, we got to get some particulars out of the way before we dive in. So I feel like. There was a long t- break between our last show and this show. It was like a third week. Was it? We, just one extra yeah, week? God, just extra man. Week. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it's because so much shit happened this week right. and last week and the week before that in MMA that I was itching to get this show ready and done, excited. So I'm going to get these particulars out of the way before we dive into the show. Uh, www.kickandmakeup.com is the website. Go there. Check out all of our past shows. Uh, check out my Ola America articles um, as well. A few of those... Uh, few more of those are coming up this week um so got a chance to get getting on some media conference calls Been cranking them out man yeah man i'm excited about a couple episodes uh, or a couple issues not issues or episodes articles <laughs> look at a couple of articles that'll be out this week so check that out um do we miss do we even talk about the facebook page anymore do we even yeah we should i take this it. like should i just delete this off no of our, no, no no we have to nope. mention it it's a cactus so you have to give it, it. It is. This is the only love that we show it when we it's talk true. about it on the show. So we have to give what it a little Facebook bit. What if Facebook group page is like alive and it's it watches this show? They're like, oh, oh, they're talking about us. All right, they're talking about me. Right. Uh, for one, maybe time. they'll come back. We're no, not, we're not coming back. But no. if you guys want to go check it out and see what's going on there, there's some posts from like 2009 or 10, probably some of my fights from back in the day. Oh. <laughs> Back in the day, so yeah, I, check. That I think out. it's been replaced by Facebook Live. Man. I think you so know? too, man. Yep. Um, but definitely check us out on Twitter uh, at Kick and Makeup at Hybrid MMA is mine at Jeremy JD Dorsey is yours. Yes. Uh, rocking and rolling on there. We're on Instagram and we're on YouTube. So, you know, this year as it's it's Christmas coming up, you're thinking of what to get your your family and friends. Give them give them the gift of Kick and Makeup. You know, wow, yeah, I like that. You know, gift them uh, a gift of kick and makeup. Um, call them up and say, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, please subscribe to Kick and Makeup. Yes, it's it's free, like, it's free, just include it in your like your your Christmas cards and stuff. Like, just put it right at the yeah. bottom, just like put our address www.kickandmakeup.com. Merry Christmas, mom. Circle it. I know we haven't talked in a few years, but I love you. Have a Merry Christmas and watch Kick and Makeup. Yo. Yep you will love it. Why not? They'll love it. Everybody yeah. will love it. All right. So here's how the show goes for everybody. It's your first time watching. If it's your first time watching, we've got a high kick, we've got which is the best thing going on in MMA, a low kick, which is the worst. Uh, we've got something special today that we will wait on to say. But then we've got the uh, Coco high kick. We've got the uh, that's some bull kick segment where we just rant and rave about some BS going on. And there's a lot of it. Some tomfoolery. <laughs> and Tom uh, Foolery. we uh, we've got. A uh, ridiculous segment at the end. <sighs> talking about wrestling. This guy loves it. You guys, if you've seen the show, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, we can't wait for that segment. Whatever. So, we'll, we'll get to that. But we got to get some announcements out of the way. Some big announcements this week um, and last week. So, we've got to start off with UFC Fight Night in Arizona has been announced. Sunday, January 15th. BJ Penn 
has re- got rescheduled. He's the main fighter on that main event fighter. Guess who he's taking on? Who? Yeah, you're Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. So, thoughts on that, buddy? What? Who? BJ Penn? Yeah. Doing what? Fighting? Well, he's gonna be Supposedly. there. Supposedly, he's gonna be there. <laughs> he's gonna be in attendance. He's gonna right? be in the yeah. main event. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not the uh, BJ Penn man. It's just BJ Penn. I mean, it, it's. Do you think at, he at this knows? Point, Do you think yes, he knows? Yes, like, he knows what's going on. He knows at this point in time. He is the the butt of of jokes as far as the the the, the, the MMA you know fans and circle is concerned because it, I don't I don't find anything that he does relevant anymore and i mean that's i guess i mean how long have we been talking about him sort of stepping away and i think he actually did kind of yeah <laughs> but for whatever reason he keeps kind of floating around on the end and then gets hurt or pulls out of a fight and then you just start back over where you were at before so i don't really like the i don't really like the, the back and forth nature of what he's doing and i guess he's still a draw yeah for somebody somewhere for so. a 40 and for the masters division for like the, yeah. for the old school fans they're gonna see like oh bj penn and that's exactly what's going on with this fight they're like i gotta watch this bj penn fight and while watching it they're gonna be like who the fuck is this yair rodriguez guy right. boom <laughs> yep. instant fan base yeah so i get it but i feel bad like that but i'm gonna watch it but oh man okay i'm you know i really feel bad i mean i do kind of because i just know like what they're doing and what's probably gonna happen and that's probably gonna be his last fight and that's how he's gonna go out against the i rodriguez but who knows maybe he's gonna have a a hendo moment and have a career resurgence could maybe Maybe. Could not. <laughs> Could. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe. Uh, so then uh, UFC a couple weeks later on Fox 23 in Denver. Uh, main event, Hector Lombard versus Brad Tavares. But what I really have to give a big shout out to this card is our friend, Kick and Makeup's friend. Yes. Quad City. Friend of the show. Native. Galesburg native. Anything else? Tough 24 alum. Yes. Almost Tough 24 winner. I'll yes. say it. Almost. Uh, Eric Sheldon, Eric Showtime Sheldon, is on that card. He's got a contract with the UFC. He's fighting Alexandre Pantoja. I'm so excited, man, to watch this, dude. I, I was like, when he didn't, I knew if you know, if you watch Tough, which we all do, you know that like you can still get contracts if you don't course, win. Of course, of course. And so I knew he was gonna get a contract. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just didn't know when. And I love that it's like close to right the after. show like because yep. that keep the steam rolling all that stuff so uh that's pretty exciting man he's trying yep. to get up to denver and train there yep. um smart smart yep. to train high altitude so um hector lombard and brad tavares isn't a bad main event either no um, no it a, isn't. Uh, for a card you know it isn't. In, in january so january is that time of the year where you gotta like you, There's a lull. Usually. You blow your load in December, <laughs> yep. we'll say. <laughs> At the UFC does. January's the nap. January's the drizzle. <laughs> the dribble. The dribble months. <laughs> the dribble. Oh man. But yeah, I'm I'm excited about that too. Yeah. Um so glad to see uh Showtime Shelton and um you know, finally gonna make his UFC debut. I know it's been a long time coming for for, for him and somebody that we've seen grow and develop, you know, pretty much his entire career. I know you go all the way back to the beginning with him. So um, it's cool to see somebody, you know, make it to that stage. And I know that it has inspired a bunch of other guys uh, in the local area to, to um, you know, to, to keep working hard because there is that opportunity. There is that chance. Yeah. And a lot of times you, you see people and you're like, you know, all oh, these guys, you know, we're in here just, you know, grinding away for nothing. But you really aren't, and um, right. you know Eric can can attest that that that's that's real. It's reality, and it can happen for you. So I'm excited for it, man. Um, yeah, he has been in Denver practicing and training for a while, so um, he'll definitely be ready to go, man. Yeah, we need to get him on the show. We do before that. We do. We're gonna we do, do it. Yep. All right. Cool. Uh, UFC Fight Night on uh, in Houston, February 4th, Super Bowl weekend. I like this card, man. They just got announced this past weekend too. Dennis Bermudez, Bermudez versus a Korean zombie Chan Sung Young. Um, main event, co-main event, Alexa Grasso, Felice Herrig. 
Love it, man. Yeah, crazy fight, man. Dude, I did not see that coming. Yep. Like, me and you were talking about uh, who is Alexa Grasso going to get next, and we were throwing all these names, and I kind of just forgot about Felice Herrig and her win in Chicago. Totally forgot Big about Big win her. in Chicago. Yep. Um, I love that fight, man, because, you know, you, you don't want to put Alexa Grasso versus somebody, like, too high yet, but Felice Herrig is one of those the, those women that have been around for a while and you know she had kind That's, of a resurgence this last few months uh her last fight so i love it i love that fight man yeah that, and that's not a that's not an easy fight by any stance um so yeah it'll it'll be a tough one um but i think grasso is 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 more than ready for that type of yeah. challenge yeah um, me too man and but i mean from what we've seen from from herrig especially in her last fight man she's really taking her uh her ability up another notch so i'm i'm excited for yeah, that one too. like you said totally out of left yeah, field I did, like, I was not, I guess I not, not out of left field but out of left field in my mind i wasn't expecting that at all but that's a perfect matchup yeah and perfect felice matchup. is is pretty marketable too so you know win by felice would you know completely skyrocket her, her career back um, so I, I like that. And then also Abel Trujillo and Ovin St. Pru are on that card as well. Um, obviously not fighting each other. That'd be a fun <laughs> fight, though. I'd watch that fight. Yeah. I feel like that'd I, be fair, too. I haven't seen um, Trujillo in a while. No, me neither, man. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see him come back. I know he's one of your favorites. He is, man. He is. A roller coaster of a career so far mm-hmm. for him, too. Mm-hmm. Just personal life and injuries and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, not a bad card. Uh, Super Bowl Saturday, probably, then, I would imagine. And mm-hmm. then... Super Bowl, uh, Detroit Lions in the Super wow. Bowl, probably. I saw something the other day that said five reasons why Detroit Lions are a good Super Bowl. And I, it was too much. I'll even admit, I was like, whoever Wait, wrote this, hold on. pump your brakes. Slow down it was a still bit. fun to read. I was like, yeah, all their points, I was like, you could pretty much write that for any winning team. Except like, the Bears. Except the Bears. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, anyway, I'm looking, for, uh, looking forward to a nice uh, Super Bowl weekend. So here we go. Let's get into the show. Let's talk about the high kick. It's a big one this week. Yeah. Do you know about the mama? The what? The mama. Mama. Do you know about that? You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. The, the MMA, MMA Athletes Association. The form they formed this week, last mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. The mama. Ma. Yep. <laughs> So, Bjorn Rebney, GSP, Donald Cerrone, TJ Dillashaw, Tim Kennedy, Cain Velasquez. They are the forefront of the MMA Athletes Association. Uh, pretty much a union. They've said this week that they are going to pretty much have to go into being an official union mm-hmm. for athletes uh, to make sure everything is fair, money, uh, insurance, um, everything. Just, you know, taking care of the fighters because sometimes the organizations don't. Um, and they are open to all the organizations, so this isn't just a UFC thing, but it seems like it has been lately, just mm-hmm. focusing on US, uh, UFC fighters. Uh, there, there was a podcast uh, I was listening to the other day that said that there's been like 200 fighters now that have joined this. I don't know what that means. Like you just say you're right. cool with it. What's, what's join really mean? Right. Um, you know, what is that? If you say you join, how, and how does that affect your next fight? You know, it's it's weird. It's so new, early, but I I wanted to ask you. You know, what does this mean for fighters in 2017 to you, and what do you think is going to be successful? Let's talk about how it's going to fail. Um, let me wrap this into my um, Coco Low Kick. Okay. As well. Um, no, not but, Coco Low Kick. Oh, Colo Colo Kick. Colo. Colo Kick. Colo Kick. I don't know why I keep getting like the <laughs> Colo. Like the accent, right? You know, you gotta say it like because colo sounds like it's Spanish. Colo. Yep. Colo. Yep. There's other dun, words that dun, sound dun, like dun, colo. Dun, dun. Colo. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I'll I'll wrap my way back around to that. But All right. Um, I'm definitely for it. Um, I can't tell you or. I mean, you know how many times we've talked about it, how many times we mentioned that there needs to be some sort of representation for these guys. Um, the one thing that I have my doubts about is that the union is only strong when you have everyone involved in it. So it's going to be hard whenever you have a union and you're trying to get it off the ground um, to get everybody to, to buy in. So that's what they're going to need. And um, getting to that cold low kick, um, one Mr. Dana White. I don't know if you you saw the the, the quote that he had today about Rebney. 
Um, I got it on my on my phone notifications earlier, but um, he said Brebney was a stupid motherfucker. Oh, so we're go- we're doing that already? Already, already, wow. already. Okay. And that's, no, I and didn't. That, I didn't see that. Yeah, that's I I saw it, and that that's why I had my I had my co high kick or my cocoa kick, and I had to change it up when I was sitting in the car for a second. I'm like, this deserves to be talked about. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, and. It's just it's so discouraging to see um, him taking the the meatball owner approach as opposed to even saying that, yeah, this is like you could you could even say that, yeah, this is good for the sport. You know, um, I believe the fighters deserve representation. You could have left it at that and still felt the way he felt, still wanted to, you know, not agree with it, um, not going to do anything to um, to 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 support it at all. But to come out and be flat out like, oh yeah, Rebney's a stupid motherfucker. That's like, too much, man. Yeah. And it's it's so it just yeah. it's so cheap. It makes it it makes him sound makes him sound petty, and it makes it actually gives the the uh, he added some Z's <laughs> yeah, at the just, end. Just you fell asleep at the end. Maz. It actually it actually adds <laughs> credibility to them yeah. because it makes. It makes Dana seem like he's a little afraid of it. And well, he should be a little bit. Yeah, especially if they can get, you know, everybody on board. And you don't have to, yeah, you know, I say he should be afraid of it a little bit. You don't have to be afraid of it. You just have to accept it. Mm-hmm. Um, and these names, I think these names are kind of scary. You've got, G, you know, you don't have, you know, the guys that are just starting. You've got GSP, one of the best in the sport, period. One, you know, you've got Donald Cerrone, somebody who's successful right now. TJ Dillashaw, successful right now. Tim mm-hmm. Kennedy kind of had his outs with the UFC, but yep. he is fighting this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, so current fighters, Cain Velasquez fighting in a couple weeks. Like you've got current fighters, champions, ex-champions, um, and then you got Bjorn Rebney. As yes, yeah, that was kind of a a, mm. a, a wrench, not a wrench, yeah. but like an a out name, of left field, out of left field. <laughs> um, so I just think that you've got to just wait and see. Like, big shout out to Rebney though, because he was cool with us. He was cool with us, real man. cool. And so, cool. I, and that was that's why I said it, it wasn't a negative thing. I just didn't expect to see mm-hmm. that name. I was mm-hmm. like, oh shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how they are going to be successful is make sure you start slow. I saw something that the other day <laughs> last week. I think you're laughing because they wanted to get rid of all wins and top. losses all the way to the top. Like, let's change everything. Yeah, all at let's once. have an all draw. I, it was like we got to get rid of the win and loss part of this fight because that's that really takes a toll on fighters. I was like, if you're a loser, it does. Like you can't take out wins and losses, and then there's so something else So what are you fighting too. for? There's yeah, no win. I saw no that loss. and I'm like, oh guys, you can't have meetings at like five in the morning, like. You know, I was so mad when I lost. I would have been, I would have felt so much better if I won that one. And we should, we would gotta get rid of the losses. Like, no, nah, no, no. It sounds like those those kids that you um, that you see like on the first day of school, and they come in, and they're all like excited about everything, and you know everything is new to them. And oh my God, this is you know I'm finally in the ninth grade or something like that. And they start you know slowly but surely realizing that hey, I'm the low person yeah. on the totem pole yeah. here. That's what I'm and saying. And I kind of got to work my way up. So start start small. Make your first piece of business something that is for the fighters, like literally for their health or for their safety, mm-hmm. n- not like a huge thing. Like mm-hmm. we're gonna have two referees in the cage instead <laughs> of one. You know things like that. Like just that. Yeah, don't that stuff, alter the sport. Yeah, that stuff will right come away. later. <laughs> right. So um, it's it's a big day. It was a big day. That was a big announcement. Um, I was happy to see it, and if it does make the fighters happy, a happy fighter is a, a good fighter. Mm-hmm. It's good for everybody. Mm-hmm. It's good for us because they fight. You know, everybody's <clears throat> happy. It, they're protected. They're safe. Um, mm-hmm. That should be what this association is about. We'll see. We'll see in the right. next, you know, six months what happens with this. Yeah. It, it may fizzle out. It may yep. just be, you know, a group of people that come together and nothing happens. You know, they're they're up against some big some big time people and some big opposition apparently yeah. already yeah and you know that's the that's the unfortunate part of it that in order for a, a union to be recognized you can you can go about it two ways you can be validated by the group that you're opposed to so that would mean like the ufc saying that yes we will acknowledge them as a union and you know try to work with them on different things or you can try to go about it you know forcefully um 
and I think that the UFC is going to be adamantly opposed to yeah. to, to, to going the forceful route, and they don't look to be um, very accepting of a you know um, a, a a sort of gentleman's agreement uh, either. So. Agreed. This, this is going to be rough. It's going to be Agreed. rough going. They're going to have to get through the, the the rocky points. I think their first order of business should be to get you know 100 percent of the uh, of the of the fighters in the UFC to be on board with the union. I yeah. think that's the first thing you need to do. Get yep. as many numbers as you can, and then go from there. Um, whoever you don't get. Um, have enough numbers that eventually they'll have to come to you because they're going to need something at some point. Right. So. All right. We'll see, man. Yeah. We'll definitely be talking about this uh, beginning of the year. So the, this week's Kohai kick. Wow. See what I did there? Oh. The, the, the bow gong. I like that. Yeah. It's, it's kind of sweet. Respect the gong. Respect the gong. <laughs> All right. My Kohai kick. Our Kohai kick. UFC in December. Not only... It was, Turn the lights off. So yeah, not, mood not only is December my birthday month, <laughs> Yes. the UFC gives me a present every year of loading up <laughs> the, car, the, the month with cards. So this year, four big events are going on in December. Um, this Friday, UFC Fight Night Albany. Um, then on the 10th, UFC 206 uh, with Pettis and Holloway main event. Then this next Saturday, the 17th, is UFC on Fox. In Sacramento, Van Zant and Watterson main event. Um, Friday, the December 30th. Um, excuse, or yeah, that is a Friday card. Uh, it is uh, Rousey and Nunez. Nunez. Um, so those are some big, big stuff, man. Mm-hmm. And you know, they wanted to put that card on a Friday uh, because they didn't want to, you know, compete with right. New Year's Eve. Right. Smart. So uh, I just wanted to say, you know, that's a lot of fights. I love it because we can talk about all of them. We, you know, we can talk about all of them at some point. We're not going to talk about all of them now. We are going to talk about what fights we're looking forward to. So I'm pretty sure you perused the cards, mm-hmm. uh, saw what you like. So what's the first fight you're looking forward to, or just one of the um, three or four? Yeah, one of we'll the. See if we agree. I would probably say the, the 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 fight that I'm looking forward to the most, uh, only because I love the story behind it. Well, okay. Let's see if you can guess the one. It's on here. I'll give you. I'll give you a hint that it's on here. But there's one fight on here that I'm more excited about than all the other fights. Which one would it be? It's probably the one I am too. Let's see. Sage and Mickey. Yes. Yes. Ah, yes. That's yes. me too, man. And I didn't put them in yep. order. I yep. just nope. I just picked like no nope. nope. three that I was excited for. Yep. But. That's some it. reason I am, that man. I'm it. so excited for that one. <laughs> yep. yep, it's the storyline behind it. Like, I really want to see if, you know, Mickey Gall is going to be able to, to, to take down a take down a, the, the, the career of another, you know, up yeah. and comer, so to speak. So, um, yeah, I, and it's, it sort of gets into my WWE side where you have the, 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 the build up. You know, and um, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm excited about that one. I, yeah. I think the Rousey New Year's fight is 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 That's bigger overall yeah, for the sport. That, yeah, we have to talk about that one yeah. too. I mean, obviously, yeah, and I love, I really like the UFC on Fox Sacramento card. Mm-hmm. It's it's really fun. It's got a lot of good fights for people to watch. Um, that Sage and Gall one's one that if you if you're just tuning in that night, it's Tough. gonna be fun, man. So oh, yeah, it's gonna be great. I, I see what they're doing, but yeah, the Rousey Nunez one. Um, for some reason, I think I'm still going to stick with that Ronda Rousey wins. And I'm definitely in the minority of mm-hmm. that. But I just think that, I don't know. I don't know. I I see Nunez just swarming her early on. And yes, she could land a big shot that puts Rousey down and then just ground and pounds her out for a TKO win. Or, you know, she does what you know she used to do to Misha Tate and just catch that arm and and go and sweep her and go down. I, I for right. some reason I just see that playing out. It would look like all everything else is pointed in a Ronda Rousey life downfall moment right now. With it just seems like everything that can go wrong is going wrong with her right, right. now. Right. And and so this will be like the the icing on the cake. Yep. But I just think it's not gonna be. Yeah, I, I think and there's. I know you're on the Nunes side. Yeah, too. I am. I am. Um, I I would. I think the more interesting story is is Rousey winning um, at this point. I think so many people are sort of anti-Rousey at this point that 
um, the the more interesting story is what happens if she wins. That's I I just so, think this yeah. this would cap off a weird year mm-hmm. of everything going on, and she was included in this year of, of weird stuff going on, and I just I just see it happening. So I'm I'm waiting for that one. Um, I'm actually really excited for this Pettis Holloway fight mm-hmm. uh, on, on Saturday. I know it's for the interim uh, featherweight title shot. That really doesn't matter. I they they just wanted to make a title fight, right. you know, and it doesn't matter. They already have a title holder in Jose Aldo, mm-hmm. but they, yeah, they're just so they can say title fight. Um, on that media call too, you know, both fighters said like, yeah, we understand. Like, we have nothing to do with what they what they did with this you know we were fighting anyway right so they said title fight now great it actually made both of them want to step it up a little bit mm-hmm. which everybody wins then too like yeah the, the interim t- title has always been one that's like yeah whatever but if it makes the two fighters fight even harder mm-hmm. and put on a better show for everybody then that's awesome yep. then let's let's take that and then uh you know i i wouldn't mind seeing pettis and aldo i never thought i would ever see that right that's awesome even right. though they were supposed to fight yep. a long time ago yep um and then uh, Max Holloway, Jose Alzo too. Like it's, it's a no Can't loss situation for yep. us. Yep. So um, was, it, was that on there for you or no? Are um, you excited yeah, for yeah, it? Yeah, that was on there. All definitely. Right, what? Um, who do you see winning that fight? I haven't really thought about it yet, man. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't actually want to make a prediction on that one. Okay. I don't want to make a prediction on that one because honestly, like even writing the article that will probably come out tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> the on, tease. Uh, www.olamericanews.com the tease yeah i don't know i don't i didn't make a pick yet i don't know i don't know that one that's a coin flip for me um i think holloway gets that one um i don't uh, i don't want to say like the 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 extra stuff going on in pettis life is going to have anything to do with it but i do think that that is going to serve as a distraction for him so um it's kind of hard to focus when you, you know, get your cars blown up and then and broken into and then right and what then the have hell, it happen though? again. Like what the fuck is going on? I'm with moving. That? I'm moving. <laughs> like uh, that's two times in the like a yeah, span for real, of three man. months. Like, like I, mean, I don't, that's pretty direct. Yeah, that, that sucks, man. Yeah, you would. Uh, I was gonna say you would think that you know he would have done something. Maybe he did. I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did something. Yeah. But um, in order to to prepare and you know be able to to to, to deal with that, but apparently whoever is involved is uh definitely have a grudge and uh they're trying to do some major damage these days and that 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 definitely sucks yeah i mean you know he doesn't feel safe at home man that has to be a horrible feeling right and he said nobody was hurt nobody's family wasn't threatened all that stuff too so that's that's awesome but yeah i yeah that is definitely a factor in it but man he you know he took out Oliveira. didn't see that coming um so He's he's a champion. He's just not not a champion in this division, but mm-hmm. he still is Anthony Pettis. So um, we'll see what happens. The other one I was thinking about that's kind of going under the radar with so much stuff in December is the Dominic Cruz and Cody Gombra. That mm-hmm. is the co-main event of the Ronda Rousey card. Yep. UFC 207. So I love that one too, man, because that one happened so fast too. And that one that one has a little bit of, of background it and does, a, it does. a little heat in the background. Um of that one too so yeah um i'm 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 excited about that one too i i really want to see if the 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 cody no love hype is more than just hype yeah this like is he's, gonna show he is it. legit he's 100 percent legit right. but nobody is like dominic cruz no nobody there's no there's no fighter that does what he does you have people who try to emulate him a little bit um like you know kind of like T.J. Dillashaw kind of kind of does it a little bit with the footwork, but we yeah. saw what happened when they. You fought. have to counter the <laughs> counter guy. Like, oh how God. do you counter the counter guy? Like you have to. It's so crazy because like this fight, we will know what's going to happen in this fight. Thirty seconds in, in the first minute. I was going to say the first thirty seconds, first minute. We will know yep. how this fight's going to be. Yep. If he if Garbrandt doesn't catch Cruz early and put him down, and I'm not saying knock him out, but put him down and and, and remind him that you know my hands are are heavy. You know, is he just? Are we just gonna watch? You know, Garbrandt chase Cruz for the next twenty-five minutes. Yes. And just that's what that's the fight. Yes. And uh, and and God Cruz is gonna Cruz is gonna pick him apart like he does everybody and else. That's what I'm saying. I, you know, we'll chip know and move, in the first chip minute. And move, so. Chip and move. And before the end of the fight, Garbrandt's face is all bloodied and bruised up, and you're just like, 
man, how did this happen? It didn't look like Cruz yeah. landed one hard shot, but no, the accumulation of all of them. 200 right. medium shots. So I'm excited for that. Mm-hmm. Good end of the year card. It really is. You know, I, I like it. I know there's a couple other fights I'm forgetting. Uh, oh, yeah, Cain Velasquez. Mm-hmm. He's on that, that card, mm-hmm. too, the year end. So they did a good job, the UFC did, of of spacing out some of these fights over the course of a, of a month. And, uh, man, I'm excited for December. Yeah, me too. Lots to talk about at the beginning of the year next year. Yes, big time. And next year already. Oh. All right. Now for your... Uh, Colo. Your... No, wait. I already did no, it. No, 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 you did it. So I we're doing. Did it. We're do, I just wanted to say Colo again. That's, a, that's what it really was. Um, so now the low kick. <laughs> Is it sad that like three years ago I had furry boots? I had boots. Remember those? The, the, <laughs> yes. Of they were the, the turnover ones. Yep. Like you could have them up or you could like click them Fold down. Fold them down, yep. And they're little. Yep, yep. It threw yep. everybody off at work too that I was. Walking around in Rockaway furry <laughs> boots. They're so warm and comfortable, though. Uh, so anyway, this week's uh, <laughs> get off my boots. So this week, uh, the low kick is this rumor going around, and I'll say this: it's a rumor. It's a rumor. There's a lot of W M E I N G talk this last couple weeks of changing of the guards and things like that. And I get it. But there's a rumor going around that they might be getting looking to get rid of Joe Rogan and Mike Goldberg. Okay, as reported by Ryan Harkness of UpRocks, longtime cable television insider Dave Meltzer has reported that many aspects of USC shows may change. WME IMG is willing to hand control a production currently taken care of in-house by the UFC over to whatever network wins the next TV deal. And that means Mike Goldberg and Joe Rogan may go. So, dun, dun, dun. do you want to see Joe Buck calling UFC? Of all people... You had to say Joe Buck because he got have, I, have I talked to you about how no, much I dude. despise but Joe Buck? But he got hated on so much in the World Series that I didn't even know who he was really. Uh, like honestly, I really didn't. He tries. He tries to act like he doesn't have a okay. He says that every city says the same thing and that you know that he's biased against you know certain teams or whatever. Yeah. I think he has a legit biased against Chicago teams. Okay. Like okay. with the with not not so much it wasn't very apparent with with the Cubs situation, but listening to him call Bears games and especially Bears Packers games back when the Bears and Packers used to really go at it, like his maybe it was just a Brett Favre slash Aaron Rodgers um, you know Dick licking contest that he was trying to win. The worst type of contest. <laughs> yeah. Let me, can I add the word next? I, I don't ever. Let, let's just talk about the worst contest you could ever be in. Is that contest? But yes. continue, please. Yeah, but no, it's just <laughs> I. If he started doing who else? You know MMA. Who God. else though? Because you think about it, like oh. so NBC is gonna be. Please don't. And Fox already had their contract, but they could win again. He was he's Fox, right? So yep. he'd be Fox. Yep. ABC probably not. ABC is probably not winning. But like you gotta think of all these networks that are gonna be vying for it. Um, you know who in NBC? You gotta be careful because I don't want you to get rid of Joe Rogan and Mike Goldberg completely. Mm-hmm. Maybe they don't do as many fights. Maybe that's maybe they do the bigger ones, but don't get rid of them completely. Uh, you, you need so you're saying like phase them out almost. Yeah, or no, not even phase them out, but keep them around for like once a season or okay. one the big like pick four big cards and have them do those like the year end card, the New York card, the summer card, the Conor McGregor March card. Like okay. keep them around for those that you know are going to be giant cards because can you imagine somebody can you imagine anybody else commentating for the conor mcgregor car conor mcgregor cards like the cards no. that you know get the bajillion pay-per-view buys right. do you really want somebody that just works for the network or do you no, want they, mike goldberg and joe rogan i mean you, that's that's who i associate mma with and that's who so. we all do and i'm for the changes but don't just make sure it's a um, make sure it's a good change. That's right, what I'm saying. and um, I don't really know how or where you go with that or who you switch that to. I don't know, man. They're so synonymous with the sport that you consider like their voices are part of the sport. And when you get to that point, um, you know it's really hard to to imagine change. But I'm guessing too. Don't just hand it over to the networks, though. 
No, no, and yet I don't want just generic because you know, you know, commentary. You know, either. NBC Sports Network. They didn't just hand it over to NBC. They gave it to Boss Rutten. Right. You know, they gave it to other you know, right. people that know the sport. So right. do that. Maybe give it over to one network guy and an alumni. Let's let's play a little detective here, a little investigative All journalism right. here. All right. Um, I got my pad out. Let's link this rumor. Okay. With the rumor right. of Joe Rogan leaving. Yeah. And I guarantee you they're related. This is this is all part of what they're going to do. So to me, when I heard this, I 100% believed it because I said this is just, this is just fallout or, you know, more leak of that whole situation yeah. and conversation. That's him, about six months old going, now, right? Yeah. That was yeah. in the summer about. It, it yeah. was all, it was, it's all part of this. And I'm sure they saw the writing on the wall. Joe saw the writing on the wall, said that, hey, I need to get up out of here. That's when that, those things started going. And now you're starting to see the other end of the shoe saying that, you know, they're looking to, to change things up, too. And the, the, the messed up part is that there's so many, so many of the other voices in the sport. Um, and I didn't I didn't really notice it until um, Fox. Yeah, it was Fox Sports 1 ran their, like, promo for their MMA shows. And, you know, you had Cormier and you had Cruz and, like, all these dudes got belts. <laughs> and you start realizing that, man, when they started this, they didn't all have belts. Yeah. But now that they got it going, it's like, that is legit. Like, right. you got the best in the best yeah. talking about the sport. You can't get better than that unless right. you get some of those guys to jump ship. So I don't know who you're going to grab in order to be as knowledgeable as those guys already are, you know? And know, like, like we've seen with Cruz, yeah. you know, incredible, incredible commentary. Yeah. Who are they going to get unless you jump to somebody that is also involved in the sport and also just not, you know, one of the, the, the Fox crew people? I know. I'm excited, you know, on a high, a high kick or a high note of this low kick. I'm excited to see new uh, UFC on different Us. networks. That's good. They're gonna uh, get us. Gonna do. Are we yep. making the, this? Is the one we're this doing? Is this is it. We're announcement, the announcement. Announcement. Ooh, I was. I didn't think it was today. <laughs> well, okay. New commentators for UFC. Yeah, right there here. There it is. <laughs> Hope someday. I'll take it. I will too. I'll man. take it. I'll, one one day, man. Yep. Uh, Just let me do 15 seconds. That's all I want. I'll be sold. I'll take 10, that's it. That's 10, 15 it. seconds. 25 seconds. 30 seconds tops. Yep. Uh, so, I'm excited to see UFC on ESPN at some point. I would like to see, I would like to watch. I don't know why, because I just love ESPN. It's been my, the the the, the uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like the cornerstone of mm -hmm. sports for me. Mm -hmm. um, so UFC on ESPN, I just want to see that logo. And I think that was really cool when yeah. UFC on Fox came. I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. So right. I'm just curious to see, but I don't. Yeah, I guess I just I don't like change, man. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. It's gonna to, be weird. It'll be interesting to see where they go. Um, like you were saying with the ESPN thing, I know ESPN has been uh, struggling pretty mightily uh, yeah, money-wise recently, so I don't know if they're going to do that, but it would probably be a good investment for them, but I don't know if they got the cash on hand to be able to to, to, to spend what the UFC is going to need uh, to in order to leave Fox, so... Um, I yeah, know. and I, 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 don't know, I'm, I don't know if you've heard about the... Um, them also talking about how the ratings for a tough have been really low yeah. and restructuring that situation yep. too and yep. it's tough still a viable format um, I think the the cool thing about tough was that you know it there were I think they said it was like 20 26 percent of the fighters in the UFC come from tough so it's cool to see them go to that level but um, I think the, it the is ratings because aren't necessarily the, the winner of tough this season gave the, one of the best Fights yeah. to Demetrius Finally, Johnson right. that we didn't Finally, even talk about yet. Yeah. Uh. So that kind of got around, right? Like that, that's, I mean, that, that's sad that that's an accomplishment, but it really is. It is. It, it really is, is, man. So, all right, we'll be talking more about this. We will definitely see uh, what happens later with with all this, but we're gonna move on to the bull kick, and it's a doozy. Ooh, it's a good one. Man. So uh, this week's that's some bull kick. Goes to uh, Conor McGregor getting a boxing license in California. Of course, it's California because LA and California. Uh, why are we still talking about Conor McGregor and Mayweather? Uh, I have here Polly Malganati. Malganati. Malganaji? Uh, Polly Malnaji. All right. That's, I, I killed it. Uh, he called out McGregor, which I love. Mm -hmm. uh, McGregor and McGregor and Mayweather's manager are going back and forth. Uh, last when I typed this up, Floyd was in the Bahamas. 
Uh, you know, <laughs> hanging so, out. So he didn't have any. Qu- I called him. He didn't answer. I was like, "What do you think about this?" Uh, I like that. I like this McGregor Malinaji fight. Uh, I've seen him too. I like him. He's mm-hmm. kind of gritty and grimy. I mm-hmm. like. He's flashy too. I like that. Um, I don't know if he's that good, really, in boxing overall. I don't think so, actually. No, he. But he, I like. He was know, pretty good. You know, a few years five back. Five years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember him. But uh, c- can we? Are we? Is this gonna happen? Okay, Mayweather and Conor McGregor is gonna happen in the next year or two, right? I, it won't go away. And it's money, and we all watch money fights. It's all about money, right? So this fight's going to happen, and I think that's fucking bull kick because it's a stupid fucking fight. What's the build-up? What is the build-up for that? How are you going to sell me that Conor McGregor has any sort of chance to to outbox Floyd Mayweather? Conor McGregor saying that he can do it. And not for me and you, we both know it's not going to happen. But for the people that are going to buy it, which is a buffrillion... Yeah. A chameleon, a chichillion. They sound like animals. <laughs> hey, put your chichillion on the leash. Uh, you'll, we'll, you know, we'll watch this. Everybody will watch this, and it's not going away. And it keeps going. Oh, just so now he's got a boxing license. And I like that. They're like, well, that doesn't matter because he needs to get a license in Nevada for that fight. Because McGregor, because Mayweather's not fighting in California. Right. He's fighting at MGM, which he has stakes in, and that's mm-hmm. the only place he fights. So until McGregor gets a license in Nevada, this isn't really that big of a deal. It's coming. But it's coming. Mm -hmm. This won't go away. No. Like, this is not going away. I think more so than anything at the moment, I don't think that 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 fight is going to happen immediately. I don't think that that's, you know, within two years of happening. I don't think so. Why did Mayweather fights take, like, five years to happen? Uh, Like, Pacquiao Mayweather, it was, like, five years. Like Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it four or five? They're actually, yeah. I mean, four or five years passed when it should have happened. Then it had, yeah. And then it sucked. It was the worst fight ever. Yep. Um, But, yeah, I think that there's no way that he would win. There's two approaches that you can take. One is he's doing this to, you know, capitalize on his you know ability and buying power or you know star power right now and wants to have that fight immediately or you put it in your back pocket for when you're done with the ufc um and you can call on it then and do it then and probably make tons of money oh and yeah. lose but who cares right um or he's using it as leverage against the ufc in order to negotiate better contracts for his fights all the above. D, all the above. Yeah, probably right. I just, uh, I don't care. Like, Conor McGregor is amazing because he stays in the spotlight even after he announces that he's going to take a year off of the sport. And then a week later, he gets a license account. I'm like, you're amazing, sir. Oh, and you're oh. amazing. Like, we can't, he cannot be not talked about. Did you, did you hear the, uh, I don't even think this is rumor. I think this is going to happen and over the next two seasons of Game of Thrones that Conor McGregor is going to be on there. Did you hear about that? They showed him sparring with the, the, the mountain. or Is it the mountain? Oh, that was like, yeah. yeah that was bare was fist fighting yeah. with the mountain last yeah. year. Yeah. But, yeah, so... No, one, the, one more reason I, I why... I think the director like, said that they, that they were going to make it happen. I, <laughs> That's I, so cheesy. One more reason why I hate myself when I, for watching that show like <laughs> and you think i'd be excited but no i, I just want that show Not to at be all. done no like I, well I'm i don't good. want that i love I'm the good. show but i don't like the cheesiness of mcgregor being involved in it just like he was in, in the call of duty game and yes. all that stuff GSP like he was in the, that same one or is he in battlefield yeah, or something yeah who knows uh, let's not talk about games okay you wanted to nope You've been playing games a lot lately? I know yep, you have. Final what Fantasy. You said. Final Fantasy. Can we agree that it's not the Final Fantasy as it's part 15? It's just been it's Fantasy. 15. Fantasy 1. Fantasy 2. Fantasy 3. It's Maybe not this really is final. the final one. No, it's not really final when you have 15 of them. Fair? Somebody dies every time. So it's so their, their Final, final Fantasy? Yep. Ah, Final it's a metal, Fantasy. It's a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Good <laughs> argument. All right. Okay, now you know how every show you talk about how like your nose itches. Yeah, I feel like I have like a hair. I know, man. Like right on the I'm edge excited. Of my this is nose. the first episode where it doesn't oh. look like I'm addicted to cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Like, like I'm just like it's something. I don't know about the air in here. 
I don't know. I feel like I got like a I nose know. hair that's just like tickling the corner yeah. of my nose. I like that we sh- we share this with the fans. Like yeah, we're why sick, not? we why got not? crusties in our eye. Like this is for you guys. So it is the holiday season, and the next segment you guys know is about. WWE and how Dorsey likes it and JD likes it over here and I don't so I was like I'm not just gonna murder this guy on the mic today about WWE I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna find an intro song that you notice know, I finished my drink but go ahead Jesus you did so let's I found a song and I was like wow this is a great song it's a Christmas song all right on the first day of Christmas JD gave to me a DVD of WWE on the second day of Christmas, I bought for me two baseball bats so I could smash that DVD of WWE. On the third day of Christmas, I bought our fans something, three shots of whiskey, so they could sit through this segment of WWE and me. Merry Christmas. Wow. Wow. <laughs> like you just, you went in. You really went in. I did, man. I was excited. You went all the way in with that one. Something for the fans. I give you, something. For I, give you I give you a, a, a nine point nine on the on Thank the execution you. of that one, sir. That Thank was, you. That was and that good. was. I just found that song. It's so uh, just so just so it's so relevant it. that it's wow. like has our names and the fans and knows that I hate WWE. And knows you love it. And, it's amazing. But it's Christmas, so maybe the it's next Google. episode uh, it's Googleable. Uh, so uh, yeah, that was just something I found. This is the segment that you all, that when I say you all, like one of you probably, and JD, you guys probably like late night texts are like, bro, that was the best segment ever. Like WWE and me where I look on the internet for stupid shit about wrestling, fake wrestling, so, so fake. He loves it, goes home and replays this segment over and over. <laughs> I do. I really do. Yeah. So let's just let's get into it. Inside of it. Let's get inside of it. <laughs> Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I like that sound effect. <laughs> can you find that? If you can yes. find that sound effect. Uh oh. All right. right. Number one. You ready? You're sitting down. Um, there you are. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's stupid. When I look. You are obviously. John Cena is gonna work very little in 2017. Did you hear about that? I did hear about that. He's too busy <laughs> acting in movies like Trainwreck. In, in daddy's home in his five minutes probably in Thor coming up so busy is John Cena that he doesn't have time for the WWE anymore Here, can you hear that the fans are crying oh John Cena what are we gonna do without you what are you gonna do without John Cena what are you gonna um, do without your uh, footsies like your exists. onesies I don't, I'm, I'm not the biggest what do you do with your John Cena man. boxers <laughs> I'm gonna wear them and not wash them until he comes back. It's more weird that I know that yep. that you have them than yep. that. Yep. Yep. But what do you think when you saw that? Like, oh, he's gonna be this. He's gonna be the wannabe rock. <laughs> he's trying. He's trying, but he's not the. Try harder. Yeah. He's he doesn't have the the overwhelming charisma that the rock has, and I think that's the one thing that holds him back. But I, he, he can thing. be successful. That's the one thing. Yeah, he can, <laughs> he can be successful. I mean, I I enjoyed him in Trainwreck. I mean, besides showing his ass and I was gonna say shit, you enjoyed him in Trainwreck. I thought he was pretty good. I bet you did. I bet you did. I thought he was pretty good. Don't was, don't don't was, give me that side look. <laughs> I know what that side look. That was is. probably great for you, wasn't it? That whole scene. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good actor. But I mean, he's his his back is is horrible. He's not gonna be able to hold up to the punishment that it would take to to fight a full schedule so he'll probably participate in you know the royal rumble and wrestlemania but that's about it okay well (laughs) funny funny you bring up wrestlemania and royal rumble because that's what number two is about oh man you remember last week when we talked about brock lesnar and goldberg and the plot thickens this week did you know did you know that fight was scripted? <laughs> of course yes. you knew. Yeah, because they're all scripted because it's fake. <laughs> F-A-K-E. Oh, fake. All right, so <laughs> the plot between Goldberg and Lesnar thickens. Goldberg beat Lesnar in Survivor Series. I'm just going to do this. And now it's rumored that Lesnar may interfere with Goldberg at the Royal Rumble and set up a big fight at WrestleMania 33. 
Duh. No fucking shit. <laughs> right? No fucking shit. Um, Hashtag no fucking shit. Well, a little shit. Only because everybody thought that this was supposed to be um, uh, Goldberg's last fight, the last one that he had Survivor Series, that that was supposed to have been it, but I guess they decided to, to keep the train going. Um, I don't exactly know why. Um, the way Survivor Series turned out was kind of weird. Um, did you hear about that? No, I didn't hear about that. Goldberg do, won. Do in tell. Like, Goldberg. Oh wait, won yeah, in I like did. Thirty yeah. something seconds. Yeah, like it was ridiculous. And that was not planned, though. That was off script. I don't know no. with wrestling. Like it was real. That was. That, I mean, it was. It was supposed to happen that way. It was supposed to happen. That way. All right. But yeah, it was. I don't know. I don't. Goldberg doesn't really do too much for me. I don't really understand why they're pushing him the way they're pushing him. He does him a lot for me. Okay, now we're even. A lot. So you get you get Goldberg, I get Cena, right? God, we're both we're both catchers on that one, aren't we, buddy? Oh God, negative. <laughs> Never mind. I take back what I said about you. If you take back what you said about me, we take it all back. Let's take it start all back. the show over. Jesus Christ! And, <laughs> and this is the episode we're gonna re- rewind. Welcome it. to the Kick and Makeup Show. You know what's funny about this segment? <laughs> you know what's, funny, what's what? great about this segment is I really do hate it because I think I had a number three. <laughs> <laughs> but there's not a number. Just didn't three put it on here. there, huh? Okay. So we'll just focus on those two. We'll just like. Uh, That's enough. Let's, we could talk about something else. Like, um, I mean, we could talk about like um, Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. Can we yes, talk I about how that. Baby Groot's so cute? Can yes. I get a Baby Groot little like in my pocket? A pocket Groot. I'm sure you could. I'm God, sure you man, could. That little guy. Yeah. He ran off with that button. Yeah. And I was like, you get, you get back here. I mean, but little it, motherfucker. I never thought that. Um, you know, saying I am Groot could have so much comedic effect. It's his voice. The only too. thing that he's he says, cute. right. He's just a little Changing cute inflection guy. a little bit. And then yeah. he's swinging people around again. I'm like, he's fucking people up. Yep. I like that trailer. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I like the little, the lady yeah. too, the wasp. It's kind of cute. Whatever, mantra, mantra, maybe yeah. her name. Mantra. And how she was, she can read people and all that it's stuff. pretty cool. Yeah. Any other trailers you've seen that you like? Ooh, I got a trailer. What's, what what trailer? The Mummy. I haven't seen that one yet. I, I saw a little sneak preview of it, and I saw Tom Cruise running. So No, they have the I'm, full trailer out that came yesterday. That came out yesterday. Uh, I like that actress. She was in Kingsman. Uh, she was the Blade oh, girl. She's the Mummy. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So the Mummy yeah, she's female. Awesome. She's yeah. awesome. She was the the uh, person in Star Trek. Yep. Beyond, too. Yep, yep, yep. She's a pretty cool actress. Yeah, she is. So she she's is. the Mummy. I'm like, oh, hmm. man, you're switching yeah, it up. Yeah, she's going up. Yeah, I like her. Up. Sophia something, I think her name yeah. is. Something like that. Yeah, I like trailers. Like, uh, um, I don't I know. I haven't seen anything. Oh, I'm going to see Star Wars soon. That's next week, I think. Oh, it is coming out, man. Is that next week? Yeah, I think so. I'm excited about that, actually. Can't wait to see that, yeah. Um, As it's getting closer, I'm getting more excited about I it. I didn't like Star Wars growing up, but I like these new ones that are coming out. Like, you watch the trailers, and you're like, oh, shit, that looks hard as hell. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. looks really good. And it's, it's, it's so much better, and I know, uh, like, I've really only been able to enjoy it um, since I've been hurt. But being able to go to, like, the 7 o'clock showing on, like, a, the Thursday when it comes out is really cool because you go with, like, all the other nerds and... Like, you get to see everybody's, you know, reaction and stuff. Like, it's so much fun. I like that. Yeah, that's my worst nightmare, actually. Okay. Like, uh, I mean, that's not my worst nightmare. That's but, fine. like, it depends on where you... S- are you going to stab me with the... Yep. What are you going to do with that fucking... <laughs> Jesus. Yep. Right to the eye. No, I'm just saying, like, it's not my worst nightmare, but it's Can like... Can I stab you in the eye with this and then just go, like, like suck it? Oh, oh God. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Where, where did that come from, man? Can I stab you in the eye with this and suck your eye... M- matter out yeah i guess can i take a cheese shredder to your kneecap oh jesus that's rough i get i didn't oh. ha- i mean i had to think of something quick what's worse what do you think would be worse that's actually that's actually i'm gonna say it now and she's gonna be mad maybe she'll be mad that's my fiance's line of like when we watch scary movies she, we all watch them and like there's torture shit and everything and she's like why have they never had somebody take a cheese grater to your knee and i'm like why are you thinking of that? But yes, that's great and crazily awesome and oh, a scary movie. It's... But holy shit! Like, oh god, I mean, yeah, that's so rough. What's worse, probably the eye because it's your eye. Your knee, you can like patch up, 
and just have like a, a gross scarry knee. Right. But like you stab your middle of the eye and then you suck out the eyeball matter. Yeah, you won, buddy. Leave the house. It's God like watching it. those shows where they eat like goat's eyeballs and all that stuff. Goat's eyeballs are delicious, though. I've, and you've had Of them. course I have. You know I have. That's If you're Hispanic, you guys know what I'm talking about. Little goat caldo. Little. I haven't goat had a goat's eye. eyeball. It's like before. the delicacy, man. Like I went to my buddy's house and like the goat head was boiling. They give you the and I saw, and I saw the eye in there. I'm like, hey, can I try the eye? And my buddy's like, oh yeah. And like they're all excited. They're like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, yeah, nobody wants it. And I'm like, okay. And my buddy's like, that's actually like a delicacy, like the best part. It was delicious, man. Okay. Super salty, like. Did it like explode? And you could taste the eye disc, like. Oh, the, it was like kind of crunchy. Yeah. Okay. And you could see it had the the little tail behind it. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like was like the eye frame. It was like it was like if you would eat a hard contact. Okay. But you could just crunch through a little bit, but yep. like you could feel the eye eye cover. Uh, but the yes. rest of it was like really okay. good meat. Okay. I meat. I can see that. Okay, so I don't know how to follow this. I don't know how we got here. I love that we got here. Cause <laughs> <laughs> So thanks WWE and me for segueing into eating a goat's eyeball. Yes. Apparently Frank agrees with you. Done. Exactly. So he knows yeah, what's up. Yeah. You know what's up, man. I'll I thought we were cool, bro. I thought you you enjoyed. Guess uh, what? Guess what? JD's getting for Christmas this year. Goat's eyeball soup. Okay. All right, man. I know you're down. Yeah. All right. I gotta now. I gotta find it. All right. Yeah. Now we can do it on the show. We oh, both man. have an eyeball on the show. How are we gonna warm it up though? Are we gonna have like a warmer? <laughs> you gotta, here? you gotta bring it. I don't want cold eyeball warm. soup. All right, you gotta bring it. Just warm. have it at the beginning. We'll take yep. eyeball shots. <laughs> warm sake and eyeball shot. All right, I, I think of something warm. I don't know what will go with that. Just, I don't know. All right. I don't know either. All right, we're we're good. I think that's it. That's that's good. it. That's how we end it. <laughs> we let's made let's it. just talk about how we did it. <laughs> let's talk about the upcoming uh, events coming up. So this Friday, it's UFC Fight Night Albany. Your brother from another mother, Derek, the Black Beast Lewis. Yes, is fighting Shamil Abdurakhimov. Wow. I had to say that really fast, man. <laughs> I typed this real up. Quick, huh? I, when I was typing this up. I'm like, I would like to say again how proficient I am in Brazilian last names and uh, you know whatever Shamil is uh, Middle Eastern maybe yeah, or guessing. something right so that's the main event uh, one fight that we do like is this Francis Nganu yes. who was on the Chicago card mm -hmm. uh, very impressive mm -hmm. um, he's fighting Anthony Hamilton not the singer, singer no <laughs> I think we talked about that before man <laughs> like not God, he's changed. Man, he's fighting these days. <laughs> he used to just sing about trials and tribulations about life. Now he's fighting. Uh, so, yeah, that's Friday. That segues nicely into uh, December 10th. Pettis versus Holloway. Cerrone versus Matt Brown. Awesome. If Matt, if Donald fights with his eyeball. Right. <laughs> like, what the hell was that side story, too? Like, sparring, he said? Like, yeah. how the fuck did your eye get that messed up in sparring? You had a know. knife fight with a cheetah that's what you had like you got your shit slashed something up something else quick. happened yep. but okay sure yep. Yep. but yep. then yep. hopefully that goes down because that's an awesome fight but if i were matt brown i would target that eye immediately mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and then uh cub swanson and Choi, and then uh kennedy and gastelum if gastelum can make weight so that's a good card the gastelum thing kind of made me mad that he gets to him. be on. Yeah. yeah, that he's still getting some play. I was like, what the fuck is that all about? Well, the Kennedy, wasn't that fight supposed to be the last yeah. fight, Kennedy and Gaslam, so yeah. they just moved the whole fight? Right. You don't want to punish Kennedy. I guess not. I don't I know. I, I agree, too, but, like, I think everybody's pretty mad at Gaslam at this point. Can we talk about the guy that came in, like, 50 pounds overweight, too, and got know. his ass fucking powerbombed? Did you see that? Oh, my God. After the show, I will show in it to you. the UFC? No. I don't no. know that. No. I don't know um, that. Yeah, there was a guy who um, came in, like, ridiculously overweight, like 50 pounds overweight. For whatever reason, they still had the fight, um, and he proceeded to, like, fucking powerbomb this dude into a, t no. into a KO. Like, okay. it was amazing. I like I that. I will show it to All you right. afterwards. I like that. All right. 
So that's Saturday, December 10th. Check out that clip he's talking about too. Google 50 pounds overweight, body slam. Um, and then also, <laughs> nobody knows about this. Well, you might know about this, but you might not. Before the fights on Saturday, December 10th, go to www.flowgrappling.com. John Jones, Dan Henderson, submission mm. only. Misha Tate, Jessica I, submission only. So this flow grappling uh, is Chael Sonnen's, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Baby. new, new <laughs> thing. Um, but it's these guys fighting for submission only. It's the Eddie Bravo Invitational rules where it's submission only. If you tie, you go into another round where you start off in a bad position, have to get out of it. If you win, if you, nobody does that, then the other guy starts off in a bad position. Wow. Um, and then they do some weird point tallying of time. I don't know. It's cool. But Misha Tate, Jessica I, that's a rematch. Yep. John Jones, Dan Henderson, grappling How match. Mad at that, I was right? like, come on. So yep. I went to flowgrappling.com. You have to sign up for like three months okay. um, or a year. And I'm like, I just want one night. <laughs> All I need you is one I night. I felt like Chris Rock in that. What, how, how much for just one body Just chicken? one real. Like, I was like, come on, man. So, But that's awesome, man. So check out, you know, give a shout out to flowgrappling.com we have nothing to do with them but i thought that was a cool yeah, that's awesome. saturday afternoon 4 30 p.m central time on saturday so you can watch those then go right into the ufc 206 mm-hmm. pretty awesome man um that's it we're good we that's told it. we told you everything in december what it. more do you want i don't know why we have nothing more to give except where you can find us <laughs> let me switch back like i don't know the website but i just want to make sure gotta read it i don't want to say like you know a different website www.kickandmakeup.com is the website check out all of our shows all of the old america stuff um you know go give some love to the facebook group page maybe like you know upload a picture of something of a cactus or of a <laughs> of a of your cat yes. or of your you know i don't why not who knows let's have fun cactus. with it cactus cat cactus uh, that'd be a scary thing, though. Yeah, you couldn't pet it, so it'd be really mad. It just—it would want love from me, but you couldn't pet it because it's a, a cactus. Cactus. I have a picture actually that I, I'll send you of a cactus. It's weird that I have that. It's like a <laughs> cactus cat. It's from Tokidoki. This calendar I used to buy. You know Tokidoki? No. I believe I have a picture of a cactus. Wow. I know, random. But right Tokidoki now. Tokidoki is random, like. What the fuck is a Tokidoki? It's a brand of like Japanese graffiti art with weird characters, like a, a milk carton gangster. <laughs> okay. Like a milk cart, like a milk carton that's holding up. I, I don't even know how to ex- start, but I think I have a caddis right. picture. So uh, I just put it up right now. All right. So Twitter at Kick and Makeup. Is the shows at Hybrid MMA is mine at Jeremy JD Dorsey's yours. Go to Instagram, check us out there. Uh, YouTube, you know, send your loved ones the, the gift of YouTube this holiday season. That's it. That's it. All right, thank you guys for watching. I'm the American Hybrid Nick Cunningham. This is Jeremy JD Dorsey. Remember, don't solve it in the streets. Take it to the cage and kick and make up. That was like a delayed one, like I'm holding your face. So then I come up with the elbow.